that before great moments, certainly before great spiritual moments, there can come adversity, opposition, and darkness. Life has some of those moments for us, and occasionally they come just as we are approaching an important decision or a significant step in our life. Most of us do not need any more reminders than we've already had that there is one who personifies opposition in all things. This is a lesson in the parlance of the athletic contest that reminds us it isn't over till it's over. It is the reminder that the fight goes on. Unfortunately, we must not think that Satan is defeated with that first strong breakthrough which so dramatically brought the light and moved us forward. Don't let your guard down. Don't assume that a great revelation, some marvelous illuminating moment, the opening of an inspired path is the end of it. Remember, it isn't over till it's over. I wish to encourage every one of you today regarding opposition that so often comes after enlightened decisions have been made, after moments of revelation and conviction have given us a peace and an assurance that we thought we'd never lose. The reminder is that we cannot sign on for a moment of such eternal significance and everlasting consequence without knowing it will be a fight. A good fight and a winning fight, but a fight nevertheless. Paul says to those who thought a new testimony, a personal conversion, a spiritual baptismal experience would put them beyond trouble, to these he says, call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye receive the promise. If any man draw back, he warns, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We are not of them who draw back. Don't draw back. Don't panic. Don't retreat. Don't lose your confidence. Don't forget how you once felt. Don't distrust the experience you had. This opposition turns up almost any place something good has happened. It can happen when you're trying to get an education. It can hit you after your first month in a new mission field. It certainly happens in matters of love and marriage. I'd like to have a dollar for every person in a courtship who knew he or she had felt the guidance of the Lord in that relationship, had prayed about the experience enough to know it was the will of the Lord. People who loved each other, enjoyed each other's company, saw a wonderful lifetime of compatibility ahead, only to panic to get a brain cramp, to have total catatonic fear sweep over them and they draw back, as Paul said, if not into perdition, at least into marital paralysis. I am not saying, I am not saying you shouldn't be very careful about something as significant and serious as marriage. Yes, there are cautions and considerations to make, but once there has been genuine illumination, beware the temptation to retreat from a good thing. If it was right when you prayed about it and trusted it and lived for it, it's right now. Don't give up when the pressure mounts. You can find an apartment. You can win over your mother-in-law. You can sell your harmonica and therein fund one more meal. It's been done before. Don't give in. Certainly, don't give in to that 
being who is bent on the destruction of your happiness. He wants everyone to be miserable like unto himself. Face your doubts, master your fears, cast not away therefore your confidence. Stay the course and see the beauty of life unfold for you. I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost which shall come upon you and which shall dwell in your heart. I love that combination of both mind and heart. God will teach us in a reasonable way and in a revelatory way. Mind and heart combined by the Holy Ghost. You will need information too in matters of great consequence. But it is not likely that it will come unless you really want it urgently, faithfully, humbly. Moroni calls it seeking with real intent. If you can seek that way and stay in that mode, not much the adversary can counter with will dissuade you from a righteous path. You can hang on whatever the assault and the affliction because you have paid the price to figuratively at least see the face of God and live. Like Moses in his vision there may come after the fact some competing doubts and some confusion but it will pale when you measure it against the real thing. Remember the real thing. Remember how urgently you have needed help in earlier times and that you got it. In the process of revelation and making important decisions, fear almost always plays a destructive, sometimes paralyzing role. To Oliver Cowdery, who missed the opportunity of a lifetime because he didn't seize it, in the lifetime of the opportunity, the Lord said, you did not continue as you commenced. Does that sound familiar to those who've been illuminated and then knuckled under to second thoughts and fears and returning doubts? It is not expedient, the Lord said, that you should translate now. That must have been language very, very hard for Oliver to hear. Behold, it was expedient when you commenced, but you feared. And the time has passed, and it's not expedient now. Every one of us runs the risk of fear. You do and I do. But did you catch the line I tried to emphasize? as I read that rather long account from the Pearl of Great Price, for a moment in that confrontation, and I quote again, Moses began to fear exceedingly. And as he began to fear, he saw the bitterness of hell. That's when you'll see it, when you are afraid. That is exactly the problem that beset the children of Israel at the edge of the Red Sea, thus lesson number two. It has everything to do with holding fast to earlier illumination. What about that which has already happened? What about the miracles that got you here? And it is not better to remain outside the church nor to reject a mission call, nor to put off marriage, and so on and so on and so on forever. Of course our faith will be tested as we fight through self-doubts and second thoughts. Some days we'll be miraculously led out of Egypt, seemingly free, seemingly on our way, only to come to yet another confrontation, like all that water lying before us. At those times, we must resist the temptation to panic and to give up. At those times, fear will be the strongest 
of the adversary's weapons against us. After you've gotten the message, after you've paid the price to feel his love and hear the word of the Lord, go forward. Don't fear, don't vacillate, don't quibble, don't whine. You may, like Alma, going to Ammonihah, have to find a route that leads an unusual way. But that's exactly what the Lord is doing here for the children of Israel. Nobody's ever crossed the Red Sea this way, but so what? There's always a first time. With the spirit of revelation, dismiss your fears and wade in with both feet. In the words of Joseph Smith, brethren, and I would add sisters, shall we not go on in so great a cause? Go forward and not backward. Courage on, on to the victory, close quote. Along with the illuminating revelation that points us toward a righteous purpose or duty, God will also provide the means and power to achieve that purpose. Trust in that eternal truth, please. If God has told you something is right, if something is indeed true for you, He will provide the way for you to accomplish it.